Good afternoon. Look around, I see a couple pilots in here. Let me ask you, how many of you have ever been lost while you're flying? It's not fun, is it? That's why we have our required VFR equipment that we use to fly. What is the acronym that we use to remember what we need to fly, the equipment we need to fly during the day? Camus foot. That's correct. Camus foot. First one, the C starts with, is compass. Obviously, that means it's fairly important. So today, that's what we're going to be going over. The way the magnetic compass in an aircraft works is there's two small magnets attached to a metal float inside of a bowl of clear liquid. The liquid is similar consistency to kerosene. As the aircraft turns, the needle is always pointing towards magnetic north, and so as the aircraft turns, the window then shows a turn of the aircraft. <clears throat> there are two types of magnetic compasses that we use. One, the whiskey compass, and the vertical card, vertical card magnetic compass. Anybody who has used both, I can guarantee, prefers a vertical card magnetic compass. <clears throat> a little hint here, not really need to know, but it will help if you can say it on a check ride. This line on the whiskey compass is known as the lubber line. There are a few errors that we get when we're uh, using the compass. First one is variation. And that is the difference between true north and magnetic north. True north points exactly from north to south as if you were looking at it on a map. The uh, isogonic lines, however, are what our compass uses to line up to magnetic north. And because they don't line up exactly with true north, they're actually off, I believe it's 1,200 miles seeking a iron deposit. We have to compensate that with variation. And to do that, it depends where you are in the world. And here in the northwest, we are at 16 and a half degrees. Another error is deviation. And deviation is caused by different electronics in the aircraft that will throw off the uh, compass by interference. To get around the deviation, you park the aircraft on a magnetic rose that many airports have, and <clears throat> you line up on the different degrees and read the compass, and if they are different, you can get a mechanic and he can try to reduce the amount of air, and if he cannot, then you must note it here, and this is called the compass correction card. And that way, that way, when you're flying, you know how many degrees off that magnetic compass is, and you can compensate for that. Magnetic dip is another error that we deal with, and that occurs in the northern and southern hemisphere. And what happens is these isogonic lines are pulling down the magnet on your compass. <clears throat> So what we do to compensate for that is there is a small weight on the south side of your compass. So if you can imagine that this is your compass needle, this is seeking north, there would be a small weight here. So if we didn't have that weight, because we are up here in the northern hemisphere, you can see how these lines have a tendency to have pulling down towards the poles, what would happen is it would pull your north side of your needle down. So we put the weight here to compensate for that to where then it is always laying flat. <clears throat> Gonna be editing this part out. <laughs> You're doing great, man. <clears throat> this and is it's good. also this weight that uh, gives us our acceleration and turning errors. Our turning errors, we use an acronym known as UNOS. It stands for Undershoot North, Overshoot South. 
When returning to a northerly heading, you must roll out of the turn before the compass reaches the desired heading. When turning to a southerly heading, you must roll out after the compass reads the desired heading. <clears throat> the reason we do this is as we turn, the weight will pull down on the compass, which will throw off the turn. So we have to let it catch up to it. To, so that's, that is why we must roll out before or after our, when, once we reach our heading. Another error that we uh, have is the acceleration error. The acronym we use for that is ANDS, A-N-D-S. That is accelerate north, decelerate south. This error is most noticeable on an eastern or westerly heading. During acceleration, the weight will swing back. So if we are heading east this direction and you accelerate, the weight will have a tendency to swing this way. And if you decelerate, it would swing this way. And that then shows as a change in heading on the compass. There isn't anything that, uh, as a pilot, we can do to fix this problem. We do need to be aware of it, however. That way, we are not turning to compensate for it when all we're doing is accelerating or decelerating. Uh, if, and I highly recommend that you do, you are interested more in learning about the compass. This is just a very quick uh, tutorial on it. There are two books that explain it very well. One is the Instrument Flying Handbook, and the other is Jepson's Commercial Instrument Book. Both are terrific, and I've used them both to uh, learn a lot about it. Thank you for your time.